The story is about a wealthy businessman named Kim Min Kyu who suffers from a strange disease. Whenever he gets in physical contact with another human, he starts having terrible rashes on his body, followed by shortness of breath. In extreme cases, he can even faint or die. Min Kyu's biggest wish is to have a girlfriend, but due to his illness, he can't approach women, a likely excuse. And because of the same reason, he has isolated himself for 15 years in his house. His personal doctor, Dr. Oh, is his only confidant, who has tried several ways to find a cure, but to no avail. Hence, one day, he tells Min Q to accept his solitary life and hands him a smartwatch that uses colors to monitor his allergic condition. Blue is normal, yellow represents a mild reaction, orange means that Min Q's airways are closing, and red means that he will die in minutes, a severity that he's never experienced. One day, a genius scientist named Professor Hong contacts Min Q. He reveals that he, along with his team, has succeeded in developing a highly intelligent robot that is capable of helping Min Q with his household choice. And since she's not a human, she will not cause any harm to him. The cost for this robot is 100 billion won. 100 billion. Min Kyu feels like this is a scam, but out of curiosity, he goes to the lab to meet with Professor Hong. And as soon as he reaches there, he is welcomed by a robot that looks exactly like a beautiful woman. She introduces herself as Aji 3, a highly advanced AI robot created by Professor Hong. Min Kyu is stunned by her appearance, and when he touches her, there is no abnormal change in him. Excited by this new discovery, he immediately expresses his desire to buy Aji 3 and even invests funds in the project. But first, he wants to test the robot tomorrow. Unfortunately, that night at the lab, disaster strikes. One of Professor Hong's team members clumsily spills a droplet of soda in Aji 3's core processor, causing it to short circuit. The professor and the rest of the team are devastated, as it may take several days to repair the robot. And since their deal can be cancelled if Aji 3 is not delivered to Min Q the following day, Professor Wong is forced to think of a new plan. He remembers that his ex-girlfriend, Ji Ah, who is revealed to be the prototype of the robot, Aji 3. Since Wong built the robot exactly like her, he goes to meet her. Both of them have an awkward reunion, and realizing that Ji Ah is experiencing financial difficulty, he offers her a salary of 10 million won if she agrees to disguise herself as Aji 3 for one day. Ji Ah doesn't want to do a favor for her ex, but since she's in dire need of money, she agrees to the offer. Following this, Professor Wong takes Ji Ah to his lab and shows her the robot. Then all the scientists team up and help her disguise like Aji 3. They fit armor in her body, put a new wig on her head, and even give her contact lenses. These lenses will actually function as cameras, which will help the professor and his team monitor everything via the real Aji 3 robot. They can also send instructions, which Jia will receive from her lens in the form of text or videos. The next day, Jia is sent to Min Q's house as scheduled, but when he opens the box, she jumps back in surprise. It turns out that she has met him previously when she worked as a food delivery girl. The experience was very bad, as Min Kyu tried leaving without paying her, but in reality, he was just trying to avoid physical contact with her. A likely excuse. Taken aback, Min Kyu immediately calls the professor and demands to know what's going on. Fortunately, the latter makes up a story that Aji 3 has two modes, operational and friend mode. Operational mode is where she acts professional, while in friend mode, she acts more like a human. The robot is now in friend mode, but it can be changed to operational mode by pressing the reset button. The naive Min Kyu immediately believes this and presses the button behind the robot's neck to reboot. After Jia returns to normal, Min Q decides to conduct an intelligence test on her. Just then, the lab power gets cut off, resulting in Jia losing total connection to the Aji 3 system. Now she has to rely on herself, but her IQ is only 94. <laughs> At first, Jia is asked to unlock a box whose password can only be found by solving a complex calculus within three minutes. Obviously, she doesn't know calculus, so she simply breaks the box open, which takes Min Kyu by surprise. Then she is asked to peel an egg without using tools within 10 seconds. Having worked in restaurants previously, she easily completes this task. Min Kyu is really impressed, so he praises the robot for being smart and creative. Jia, who has never been praised for being smart, gently smiles. Meanwhile, the lab electricity also comes comes back on, but when they connect to Jia's lenses, they are shocked to see her yelling at Min Kyu. She's accusing him of being a pervert. It turns out that Jia is outraged to find him staring at her chest, which he notes is bigger than it was the day before. He wants to open her up to check the battery pack and extends his hand to her chest. <laughs> a likely excuse. The professor drops to his knees in horror and is barely able to answer when Min Kyu phones. Who are you trying to deceive right now? Min Kyu demands. But they're relieved when he actually only accuses them of using cheap batteries, making 
seeing Aji 3's chest swell up. Hong stutters for a while and lies that he simply upgraded Aji 3's battery pack. He also warns Min Q to not touch her chest. Just don't do that. After hanging up, Min Q proceeds to have his medicine, but he suddenly chokes. He drops on the floor and starts to convulse. But fortunately, Jia helps him by patting his back. As Min Q comes back to his senses, he stares at the robot with astonishment. When he inquires why she helped him without any orders, Jia replies that she can do many things. After this, the two have physical contact for the first time, but surprisingly, Min Q does not experience any allergic reaction. Finally, at the end of the day, Jia is brought back to the lab. Professor Hong scolds her because she was almost exposed, but Jia is annoyed because she believes that she did a good job. Frustrated that she is never appreciated, she storms out of the place. Soon, the professor receives unpleasant news that the special part they'd ordered for Aji 3's repair was mistakenly sent to Africa, and it is now at least two weeks away. To make matters worse, Min Q also calls him at that exact moment and reveals his desires to take Aji 3 for a month. He wants to, uh, deep learn the robot and make it fully functional according to his needs. Left with no options, the professor calls Jia again and requests her to disguise as the robot for some weeks. This time, he praises her and offers an even larger sum, because of which she agrees right away. Then, Professor Hong explains that from now onwards, until the real Aji 3 is repaired, Jia will have to work at the mansion and every night she will be returned to the lab for recharging. Unfortunately, the very next day at work, Jia experiences explosive diarrhea. She tries to hold it in but accidentally farts. Confused, Min Q asks, what's that sound? To which the robot replies, you fart, my master. Soon the smell spreads around the house, so she suggests that he change clothes. The gullible Min Q believes her since there's no one else except them, so he leaves. Taking advantage of the opportunity, Jia rushes to the toilet to poop. However, Min Q returns early and finds that the robot is missing. He looks for her all around the house and eventually finds her spraying his expensive perfume in the toilet. Jia pretends to be cleaning the toilet, but Min Q doesn't believe her, claiming that robots cannot touch water. However, she lies that she is an advanced AI who is adept at washing dishes. When Min Q is about to leave, he finds that Jia's face is sweaty. He tries to approach her but accidentally steps on some soap and slips. Jia rushes to Min Q, but instead of saving him, she catches the perfume instead. Sadly, she lands right on top of him, hurting his ribs because of her iron plate. That evening, when Jia is cleaning, she accidentally knocks down the card castle that Min Q has compiled for 15 years. Seeing this event unfold, Min Q screams in agony. But before he can say anything more, Jia says that her battery has reached 5% and pretends to be in standby mode. He later meets the professor by saying that he's frustrated with her mistakes, but the professor tells him to give her more time to deep learn. Min Q agrees to give Aji 3 more time. The next day, Min Q lights up to see a visitor and warns Jia not to come outside. It is Riel, his first love. However, his excitement soon turns to horror when Riel touches his shoulder. Min Q tries to keep his face averted and manages to hide his spreading rash from Riel. He then pretends to have an important meeting and rushes back to the house. Somehow, he staggers to his off-limits room and reaches for the antidote syringe. But since he is too weak, he fails to grab them. By the time Jia finds him, Min Q is collapsed to the floor, struggling to breathe. Just then, the scene flashes back to when everything was normal for Min Q, back to the times when he didn't have an allergy to human touch. Little Min Q's parents cheer him on as he builds his very first house of cards. When it topples down, Dad chases away his disappointment with some cool card tricks. In another memory, everyone gathers for Min Q's birthday party. On the drive home, the entire family plays word games. But unfortunately, as Dad rolls down his window, one of the birthday balloons gets in his face, and their car gets caught in the path of an oncoming truck. Min Q next wakes up in the hospital, sobbing for his parents, both of whom were killed in the crash. I'll never look at balloons the same way again. During the day, several relatives visit him and try to become his legal guardian. The main motive is to inherit his parents' money, but when Min Q enters the bathroom and checks his pockets, he finds a mysterious message which reads, don't sign anything. Later that day, a friend of his named Yu Chul approaches him and hands him an adoption paper. Yu Chul mentions that his father sent him and that it would be great if Min Q could be his brother. Min Q thinks for a while and eventually signs the adoption papers. Thrilled, Yu Chul grips his friend's hand to give him support, but when Min Q looks down, he notices Yu Chul's hand turning into monstrous claws. Terrified, Min Q runs away screaming, while strange blisters start forming on his hands where Yu Chul touched him. After a while, Yu Chul returns to his father and hands him over the adoption papers, saying that the task has been completed. But when the father goes through the last page, he sees son of a bitch written in place of Min Q's signature. With this, he realizes that the kid simply wants to be left alone. Elsewhere, little Min Q returns to his dark, empty mansion, and from that day onwards,
afterwards, he lives away from other humans. Feeling betrayed by everyone, he starts despising other humans, hence resulting in the allergy. To make matters worse, as he grows up, no one knows about his allergy except his personal doctor. Back in the present, min -Q jolts awake with Jia beside him. He tells her that he was dreaming of people stabbing him in the back. However, he's surprised to find that he's in totally normal condition, with not even a mark on him. Hence, he squishes Jia's cheeks, seemingly grateful that she gave him the injection. As their relationship deepens, Jia and min -Q spend more time together and get even closer. One day, min -Q asks her to accompany him on a date with Riel. The date doesn't go too well, and as Riel stands to leave, she suggests that they shake hands as friends. Reluctantly, min -Q takes her hand, which results in his allergy kicking in. Soon, he starts having labored breathing, and by the time he grabs his syringe, he is caught in two minds, whether to use it or not, as he is tired of his miserable life. Just then, his smartwatch starts beeping faster, and he eventually drops the syringe. Fortunately, Jia arrives and brings him to his senses. She sits next to him, and when min -Q looks at her, his reaction lessens and the monitor returns to normal. It appears as if he has completely recovered, even without the syringe. Shortly after, the two decide to return back to the apartment, but when they are turning a corner, min -Q accidentally collides with a gardener and falls down. The latter immediately grabs min -Q to check if he's alright, but surprisingly, the allergies don't kick in. Seeing this, he tries to test himself by joining large crowds, something he hasn't done in 15 years. Later, as the two venture out, a child bumps min -Q's hand, but again, nothing happens. Then the two join a crowd to watch an outdoor performance where min -Q jumps when the person next to him grabs his hand for the wave. A check of his monitor shows that all is well. As a result, min -Q's eyes fill with tears, and he softly says, I'm finally cured. Following this, he walks to a quiet spot and calls his personal doctor, Dr. O. But as he is tearfully confessing that his allergy is gone, a passerby bumps into him, causing his monitor to beep voraciously. Meanwhile, Jia starts looking for Min-Q, and when the two meet, the latter's pulse slows down and his rashes start to disappear. Min-Q looks at her in amazement, and when the couple blocks his view, his symptoms return. When Dr. O asks if there's anybody nearby, Min-Q admits, someone is here. When I see someone, the rashes go away, and when I don't see someone, the rashes come back. However, as Jia smiles and waves, Min-Q tearfully admits it's not a person. After hanging up the call, min -Q embraces Jia and tells her it was because you were by my side. He promises to buy the world's longest lasting batteries for her and even goes on to say, stay with me forever until I die. You are now my most precious treasure. As Jia stares in disbelief, the nearby crowd starts cheering for the two, prompting min -Q to kiss her on the forehead. No ring though, cheap bastard. Back home, min -Q insists to Dr. O that even though he had contact with many people, he is perfectly fine. He then stands in front of his full length mirrors while he holds up the phone to verify his claim. Dr. O is amazed that for the first time in several years, min -Q doesn't require medication after human contact. He clarifies that it was because of the robot that's been with min -Q for the past 10 days and calls it a miracle. Then he tells min -Q to list everything that happened since the robot appeared so that they can figure out how he was cured. Over the course of the next few days, several experiments are conducted. All of them point out that min -Q will be fine with humans as long as the robot Jia is with him. Hence, he takes her with him whenever he wants to meet somebody and considers her the most valuable asset that he owns. In the meantime, the Aji-3 robot is finally repaired. It can function normally, but will require some time to adapt and make the transition smooth. Professor Hong claims that he will need some more days before Aji-3 deep learns and is ready. Jia, who has started getting used to her new life, is sad about the news. One day, min -Q takes Jia to a fancy restaurant, but makes her sit alone at a separate table. Then, he warmly receives Riel and her father. As the three interact, a clearly upset Jia looks on. After a while, when min -Q comes to collect her, she ignores his hand and leaves on her own. This goes on for a while. min -Q is safe only when Jia is around, but one day, everything changes. When he is alone, min -Q pulls into a gas station and opens his trunk where credit cards and cash are at the ready. When the attendant returns his card, he brushes against min -Q's finger, but the latter is too distracted to notice and simply drives away. However, after just a few minutes, he realizes that he touched the attendant's hand and checks himself for a rash. Surprisingly, min -Q finds nothing, and his monitor also shows that he's normal, even though he's alone. So, he arranges a meeting with his personal doctor. On reaching the hospital, min -Q hugs a speechless Dr. O and thanks him for his hard work the last 15 years, indicating that he has finally been cured completely. After he calms down, the doctor inquires if something made him happy, and min -Q 
Min Kyu answers that he finally understands love. As expected, Dr. O assumes that Min Kyu is talking about Riel, so he suggests that he also thank Aji 3. He then tells Min Kyu that he can send Aji 3 away now, explaining that Min Kyu became attached to the robot because she was his first friend in 15 years. But now that he's cured completely, he can get more happiness from an attachment made to a human. Min Kyu protests that Aji 3 made him happy, but Dr. O calls it an illusion. He wants Min Kyu to experience the touch of someone he truly loves. That evening, a depressed Min Kyu approaches Professor Hong and reveals that he is in love with the robot Aji 3. Hong finds it understandable that Min Kyu has become obsessed with the first friend he made in 15 years, the one who is also responsible for his cure. Min Kyu then confides that Aji 3 makes him feel alive, but Professor Wong reminds him that they're talking about a robot, which was pre programmed. Hearing this, Min Kyu admits that he is going crazy, and with teary eyes, he begs the professor for a solution. The following day, Wong comes to Min Kyu and tells him that there's one way. He proposes that they reset Aji 3, as this way she will forget everything and help him move on. Min Kyu is devastated, but he knows that this is the only way. Later that day, Ji A also hears the news. Heartbroken, she dresses up as Aji 3 for one last time. The next time we see her, she stands in front of Min Kyu in his house as snow falls outside. He takes her for a walk for one last time and returns to the mansion. They finally face each other, and Min Kyu tells her that the things he showed her today are parts of the everyday life that she gave back to him after 15 long years. Min Kyu then thanks her for being so many things to him, including his friend and his cure, and he apologizes again. Jia struggles to hold back tears as she expresses how thankful and sorry she is too. She only hopes that he can be happy in the coming days. Min Kyu stares at her, and as a tear falls, he manages to calmly order Aji 3 into operation mode. After this, he announces that he's about to reset her, prompting Jia to remind him that all of their memories will be permanently deleted. Despite this, Min Kyu agrees to proceed. But before he can press the button, he takes out his mother's necklace and places it around Jia's neck. He then embraces her and hits the button before inputting his final message, I love you. As Jia starts to count down to the reset, Min Kyu succumbs to his tears and holds her tightly. Once she reaches one, she finally lets a tear fall. Back in the lab, the real Aji 3 reports that Min Kyu's folder has been deleted. That night, Min Kyu and Jia cry themselves to sleep in their respective homes. Jia cries so much that she falls ill the following morning. She's taken to the hospital due to severe dehydration, and there we see that she is still wearing Min Kyu's necklace. As they move on with their lives, Jia moves to her hometown with her grandma, while Min Kyu prepares for his wedding with Riel. One day, Min Kyu gets on the train, where he runs into a familiar face. She is none other than Jia, who Min Kyu believes is his ex-robot. However, despite the two sitting next to each other, they don't utter a word. Jia is under strict orders to not react to him, while Min Kyu is skeptical if she's really a robot or not. You guys know that feeling. Wasting no time, Min Kyu calls Professor Wong to ask how he came up with Aji 3's face. Wong reveals that he made the robot based on someone he knew, which resembles her face, personality, habits, and so on. Min Kyu wonders if it is possible to interact with her, and Wong says yes. However, he asserts that it would be best if he doesn't talk, so that things don't get awkward between the two. Despite the advice, Min Kyu follows her all the way to her grandma's shop and offers to chat with her. However, she uses the excuse that she is currently busy, but being the stubborn man that he is, Min Kyu is determined to wait for her. Meanwhile, Jia hurries into the kitchen and takes off the necklace around her neck and hides it on a plate. Hours pass by, but Min Kyu still hasn't left, so Jia is compelled to interact with him. She admits that she took Dr. Hong's money four years ago to become a character model, but that's about it. Min Kyu tries to ask more, but Jia warns him to go away or else she will call the police. However, Min Kyu cleverly asks her grandma if she has an available room, and to Jia's horror, the old lady says yes and lets him stay for the night. For the next few days, he bonds with grandma, which also catches Jia's attention, reminding her of her time with him. One evening, grandma asks Jia to pick up goods from a warehouse, but since it's already dark, she asks Min Kyu to accompany her. Reluctantly, Jia drives him to the place. During the journey, they look at each other's faces and remember the past. Soon, Jia starts opening up, and they chat all the way until they reach the warehouse. But as they are picking up the required goods, unfortunately, someone locks the door, unaware that two people are still inside. Left with no choice, the couple is forced to spend the night inside, where they start bonding even more. The next day, someone finally unlocks the warehouse door and notices the couple asleep next to each other. After waking up, they return to Grandma's store and help her with cooking. At one point, Min Kyu almost spots the necklace, but before he can, Jia again 
and hides it. The next day, Min Kyu again arrives at the restaurant, but learns that Jia has already left. Sad, he looks for her everywhere until he finds her by the pier. Seeing him, Jia quickly covers the necklace, but it's too late. Because of this, Min Kyu starts reminiscing about the last day when he was with Aji 3. Realizing that he was scammed, he becomes enraged, but just before he can say anything, his allergy reappears, and the indicator shows red, something which has never happened before. In the final scene, he falls to the ground in despair, with very little chances of survival. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.